welcome you to the small little review that I have here. Uh, basically, it's a computer that I actually got, oh, I think last April or May. Uh, it's a Lenovo M710Q. It's a tiny, a tiny little workstation from Lenovo. Uh, when I got it on Amazon.ca, that's the Canadian site of Amazon itself, associated, of course, with the one in the United States. Uh, it came with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. Now, it was, I got it at, at a good deal because most of the other ones that I've seen were, you know, with either 8 or 16 and maybe 512 gigabytes of uh, SSD space. I'm running Windows 10. So, uh, I happened to find this one, I paid a little extra for it because of the memory, because it's 32 gigs, which is the maximum it can hold, and it was running an i7 6700T processor on it, so it's good up to 2.8 or 3 gigahertz when turboed, so it's a great little, la great little desktop. Uh, primarily, it was actually used in places like call centers. Uh, originally, so because it doesn't take up that much space, so it, I can only imagine this is what the primary reason this was actually made. It was for um, for actual small call centers or call centers in general, where they have plenty of people just answering calls with either Windows 10, Windows 7, or Windows 11 on it. Uh, originally, coming from Lenovo themselves, it had an i3 uh, as a core i3 processor and about four gigabyte, gigabytes of RAM, and I think a 512 gigabyte SSD uh, that was on there. So, for the time it was brand new, it probably worked well. Uh, but knowing the i3 and Windows 7 and all that, because the pro the OS was. You know how it is going from genera from one generation to another. Some of it is really bloated, some of it isn't. It, depending on the things you are configured, and depending on how it was configured up for the call center itself. So, and yeah, I picked that up, practically used. I paid about three hundred fifty dollars, then the taxes on top. Uh, ordered that, got that at home, and I went straight away to actually upgrading the hard, the hard drive on it. So instead of being a one terabyte SSD, I actually purchased two two terabyte SSDs. One that I was going to dedicate strictly to Windows, either Windows 10, but now Windows 10 is now end of life. So that leaves me with Windows 11 to be put onto there, which I did do. Uh, found a way of getting it done on it, and it was perfectly fine. And then I, on the other one that I have for it, which is a version of Ubuntu, which is XUbuntu, I just found out uh, there's a couple of other websites from DistroWatch that I've downloaded uh, some other flavors of Linux. One happens to be Ultimate Edition, and then there's uh, several other ones like Mint, uh, and a few other ones. So I wanted just to try and just go for a taste to see how those are. I've used Ubuntu for on and off uh, since 40 Hedgehog that came out from Conical. And the distributions are really good. I mean, they do have their good sides. Uh, eventually, when Gino, uh, Gnome, or Genome, or Gnome, <laughs> as some people like, the, the interface itself had changed, had changed uh, uh, configuration on the screen itself, and I didn't really like that any more uh, than I did. So I still look around uh, for the different distros, and I, you know, pick and choose and just test them out on it. And that's why I use the other hard drive for it's just basically testing and uh, see if I like it. You know, the good, the bads, and m most of them kind of even out depending on what you want to do with them. Never a bad thing with that, and especially on this. Uh, the drivers that I've found so far on the distros installed flawlessly, so I was able to go with a wired connection, wireless with a, a TP-Link uh, 
with the colors of dongle in the back for the USB. Works a lot, works perfectly fine uh, for the wireless connection. And I'm also using a wireless keyboard and mouse with this on a Windows 7 or a Windows 11 configuration, and it no problems. Same thing, same thing under Ubuntu. It detected the wireless keyboard and mouse without any problems. So I'm very thankful that it works. <coughs> Tiny as it may be, um, which I find very, I, I find it cute because I used to do a lot of technical support. I used to do a lot of PC building in my time. So going ranging from uh, going from the XTs to the 286, the 386, the 486, and then into the line of Pentium, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, and some Pentium 4s. And then it's like I kind of dithered off from the plan of continually building uh, systems for everybody. Uh, nowadays, you can get one pre-built directly from the manufacturer, or uh, hire a mom and pop store to get one pre-built for you. So, for me to actually go out and doing that, it's not worth my time as it used to be. So, nowadays, when I get something like this, I usually try to get not the latest and greatest, but within a generation, within a couple of generations, just to do you know, general things like be able to go out on the web, uh, check my emails, uh, work with uh, a text editor, a, uh, a spreadsheet, as an example, uh, with, you know, open, open Libra or open Office, as an example. Those are the two I usually go in between for both the Linux world and the Windows world. And uh, because the prices for you know, like uh, Microsoft Office is just terribly high, so I'd rather go with something that's more compatible along the way, where you can import and export to that and whatever else. Uh, overall, with Windows 11 on this system, it works very well. I don't usually play games on these things as I used to, because I used to play be heavily into uh, you know Police Quest, Leisure Suit Larry, uh, Doom, Doom 2. Uh, I did play at one point Doom 3, uh, and I think Diablo, Diablo 2 a little bit, uh, with the isometric, uh, gra what's it called, isometric uh, graphics that they had on it, but uh, I just lost favor, I just lost distinction on that, so I kind of held off, that off for me, so now I'm just doing what I had need to do with it. Uh, do what I have to do, and I'm doing also video editing here, making this log on the system. So using uh, Movie Maker to to grab footage outside and whipping it into um, what they used to have Windows Essentials Live, and using Movie Maker for that to encode into WMFB, and then using my OpenShot, which is one that I've actually learned. Uh, from the Ubuntu side, which happens to be great, along with Blender to create titles, and use that as my main editor for large file for large files, because it's you can create it easier that way. So I do tend to use a couple of video editors for transitioning certain things, and so far, knock on wood, the highest I ever got for encoding was maybe 70 or 80 percent CPU usage on all cores, so it's a four core eight thread, so 80, you know, 75, 80 percent on all of them, that's quite good, and it's, it's quite reasonable, and I don't put a lot, a lot of uh, heavy usage onto it, so it does for it what I need it to do, <coughs> and I can't have any complaints regarding that, so that's a good thing, let's go, let's, let me give you the shot of what it actually looks like in person, and that'll be in the next cutscene. Uh, you'll see me open it up both the top and bottom so you'll get to see what's inside and uh, just to let you know I have two other drives so this one here that I have from time tech this is the other other the secondary the second drive that I have uh, this is the time tech two terabyte SSD SATA 3 solid state two and a half inch and I have my Linux partition on this, the full 2 terabytes. 
Uh, this one here is the original one terabyte from Western Digital. And that there I use as a backup. So uh, in case either this one or the other one happens to go, I still have one that I can still use as a Windows environment and go with that until I can get a replacement two terabyte. Because these, these ones here from Time Tech, uh, I was lucky, very lucky on Amazon. Uh, I think the manufacturer of Time Tech had, had a super sale on these. Uh, I picked these up, two of these, for 90 bucks a piece. So I picked up two two terabyte drives for about 180 bucks, uh, for 180 bucks. And I thought that was a steal. So I got that, put the two operating systems as I wanted, one for Windows, one for uh, Windows, Windows 11, the other one for Linux. And I bought one other NVMe uh, from Time Tech, and I'm using that as a data drive for it. So that is also good. So that's another two terabyte in there. So the main drive is just for data backups and any software that I want and if I have to do a store phone release I have the downloads already there so I just have to download it uh, not download it, install it from there and boom it's done and over with I don't have to worry about it so let's go take a look okay let's go there now okay here's the 7 the M710Q Think Center from Lenovo uh, I got bought this actually through Amazon itself uh, almost a year ago uh, it comes with six USB A type connections it also has the microphone and headset power right there and on the back side they got two DVI, uh, DVI to HDMI connectors these are the DVI ports right there in there and you got four other ones in the back. As you can see, this one here where I'm highlighting it, that's the broken USB connection there. So that where is actually minus one. So I actually basically have five. And it comes with, of course, a DB15, which I'm using currently as sort of setup on this little uh, little thing center here. One thing I like about this is the size, for the fact. It's very small. It's like maybe no more than seven inches by seven inches. And it came with 32 gigs of RAM, a one terabyte hard drive, which I actually bought uh, on two larger ones from Time Tech. So I have two Time Techs here, one of two terabytes, which is this one here, which is running Linux on it, another one that's internally here, plus another one on the other side, which I'll show you when I get it open here, which also carries an NVMe. So here we go. The inside of the of the actual workstation itself. Very compact, I'll say. I like this. That's one thing I'll mention this. It's very compact and it's great. So that's where the processor is hidden. So this here tends to go on high. One thing I do will say about this system itself is that it is very useful, very quiet. I believe this was actually used in a, uh, when it was bought brand spanking new, it had an i3 on this one uh, with 4 gigs of RAM and a 128, 512 gigabyte hard drive, an old fashioned, uh, old fashioned SATA drive. Took that out. Uh, that was already taken out. It was also upgraded to a uh, Intel i7 6th generation. I think it was uh, 2.6 to 3.2 or 2.8. I don't remember the exact stats on it. But we'll run some tests afterwards just to verify the actual speed. And let's take a look underneath. Let me just put the camera down. I'll just cut out here and for a moment. And here we are underneath and by the front. And this is where... The two SODIM slots are hidden. There are two 16 gig SODIMs, DDR4. Runs very nicely on it. And there's my NVMe from Time Tech as well, another two terabyte. What I was trying to do with this is initially, 
I wanted to use an NVMe like this to have Windows 10 or Windows 11 on it and use the SSDs like I have here with uh, Windows 11 on that and then with this one here Windows or the version of Linux on that one turns out with the updated firmware that happened recently uh, when I was under Windows 10, Windows 10 or Windows 11 it still detects the uh, SSD, uh, the NVMe, without any problems. It's just that I cannot boot from it, which is okay. It's not big of a problem for me. But still, it's useful as a spare drive so I can dump any uh, any uh, applications that I want to get, you know, like uh, OpenShot, Blender, uh, certain apps that I know that I'm going to be, that I want to still have. I can leave it on there and install it on a fresh install. And believe it or not, this little son of a gun runs on Windows 11 uh, with the latest service packs, no problem. Uh, that's what I like about this. It's a small form factor and it runs great. Uh, for me, personally, I used to be into gaming quite a bit a long time ago. Now I'm not so much into gaming. I don't really play games that often. So something like this. I can still play some, you know, regular other games like the classic games like Doom, Doom, Doom 2, maybe Doom 3, but uh, I wouldn't push it on any of the new uh, AAA games on it, just for the fact is, is that it would be too demanding on, on this type of system itself. Plus, I don't have any room to put a uh, high-resolution graphics, because there's one that's built into the, I think, processor or on the motherboard itself, which is the standard high-definition from Intel itself, so... That's mainly a good thing there for myself. I use it mainly for uh, creative writing, checking emails, going on the web, and I do my video, believe it or not, I do my video editing on this as well. So it doesn't ping at 100%. I'm using uh, partially Windows Movie Maker from Microsoft to change it, the extension that I take off my digital camera here from MODs to WMV files then I'll open up uh, OpenShot which is free along with Blender because Blender works in conjunction with OpenShot because it uses the Blender engine for the animated graphics like for the titles and all that so it uses that for it so that's a good thing as well so I use that there mainly and that's totally free and open source <coughs> so let's get this here closed up and I'll be back shortly yeah, I hope you all like that. There's something small and simple. Uh, like I had mentioned earlier in the video, uh, this is a really good computer. If you're just doing some uh, simple editing, you know, writing documents, Excel spreadsheets, uh, things of that nature, some video editing like I do over here for my videos here, which I'm doing today, uh, it works fantastic. You don't need something super high-end to get the job done for some basic, basic fun with it. And I think uh, something like this should be around in everybody's home, just for a simple documentation. Nothing fancy. It works great. Take care. See you guys next week.